from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from the estate of Jose de Medeiros. This Mass is offered in memory of Jose, Maria, and Elizabeth de Medeiros. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Today we celebrate the feast of the dedication of the Lateran Basilica, the Cathedral Church of Rome. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who from living and chosen stones prepare an eternal dwelling for your majesty, increase in your church the spirit of grace you have bestowed, so that by new growth your faithful people may build up the heavenly Jerusalem. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, you are God's building. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation, and someone else is building on it. Each builder must choose with care how to build on it, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one that has been laid. That foundation is Jesus Christ. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. The word of the Lord. Help in trouble. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money chambers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered this, and it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The people then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. They then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. In our celebration today of the dedication of the ancient Roman Basilica known as St. John Lateran, the Cathedral Church of the Diocese of Rome, we're invited to reflect on both the spiritual reality of the church and the relation to it of the physical buildings in which we gather for worship. The New Testament word translated into English as church implies the assembling or gathering together of people in response to a call. The word church itself, on the other hand, seems to have come from a different New Testament word, one meaning belonging to the Lord. The word thus suggests that we should think of the church primarily as people, people who have come together in response to the preaching of the gospel and who now form a community of faith, 
a community that belongs to Christ. In today's first reading, the Apostle Paul compares the church first to a building in general, and then more specifically, to a temple. He uses the building image in order to bring out something of his role and that of others in regard to it. Like all buildings, the church has to be constructed, not, however, with bricks and mortar, but with preaching and teaching, with the celebration of the sacraments, and with the example of Christian life given to one another by its members. Paul describes his own role as that of a master builder who laid the foundation. Other missionaries and community leaders have built on what he began. Paul goes on to introduce the image of the church as God's temple, as a specifically religious building, a building, he says, in which God's spirit dwells. Temples in antiquity, including the great temple in Jerusalem, were regarded as privileged places of encounter with God. Some of the most beautiful biblical psalms sing of the psalmist longing to go up to the temple to pray and to offer sacrifice, or of his joy and peace in being able to be in the house of God. Today's gospel contains John's version of the so-called cleansing of the temple. Stop making my father's house a marketplace, Jesus says to those whom he forces to leave the sacred precincts. Here, Jesus is like one of the great prophets of ancient Israel, condemning an abuse and demanding a conversion of mind and heart. Unlike the other evangelists, John carries his story further. Jesus speaks of the destruction of the temple and of its rebuilding in three days. The saying, John makes clear, is to be understood metaphorically. Here, Jesus is referring not to the physical building, but to himself and to his coming death and resurrection. He is the true temple the place in which, in a u, u, new and unique way, God is present, the place where true worship and sacrifice are to be offered to him. Paul brings these themes together in his letter to the Ephesians when he affirms that in Christ, the community of faith is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. In recent decades, our culture has become increasingly individualistic. The emphasis everywhere tends to be on the individual, on his or her rights and opportunities, concerns and successes. Although this emphasis has real value, pushed to an extreme, it undermines our sense and experience of community, whether the community be that of the family, the neighborhood, the nation, or the church. It was against a similar kind of individualism that Paul developed his understanding of the church as a community of believers, believers who together form the body of Christ and the temple of the Spirit. The Second Vatican Council, in its vision of a renewed and more vibrant church, tried to bring back to our awareness this sense of church as a community in which all the baptized are called to play an active role in its life and worship. Central to the renewal of the liturgy, to take but one example, is the conviction that liturgy is not something that the priest does for people, but rather something that the whole community, priest and people, do together. If church is primarily people, what then, one might ask, is the role of the physical building we call churches? The name was given to them initially 
because they were places where the ecclesial community gathered to pray and worship and to celebrate the Eucharist. Churches come in all sizes and shapes. In every diocese, there is, for example, a cathedral church, a church housing the cathedra or chair that symbolizes the teaching authority and responsibility of the bishop. Some churches are large and impressive and consciously built for great public events. Others, in comparison, are small and intimate, places particularly conducive to private prayer and meditation. Catholic churches are distinctive in the way in which the consecrated host, the sacramental Christ, is kept in the tabernacle as a focus of prayer and worship. Churches, whatever their size, artistic quality, or age, bear witness to the faith and commitment of those who contributed to their con construction. On this, the feast of the dedication of the Lateran Basilica, we give thanks for those churches and for the people who made them possible. May our churches continue to be beacons of faith, symbols of friendship and welcome, houses of prayer and worship. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs. For all of us that are sharing in this sacrament of unity will deepen our sense of church as a community of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For the intentions of our donors and of all those who have asked us to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For local churches throughout the world, especially those facing persecution and other challenges, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For those who have died recently, especially victims of war and other forms of violence, that they will be brought to eternal life in God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mingling of this water and wine, become partakers of his divinity, you became partaker of our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Amen. Accept, we pray, O Lord, the offering made here and grant that by it those who seek your favor may receive in this place the power of the sacraments and the answer to their prayers. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in your benevolence you are pleased to dwell in this house of prayer in order to perfect us as the temple of the Holy Spirit supported by the perpetual help of your grace and resplendent with the glory of a life acceptable to you. Year by year, you sanctify the church, the bride of Christ, foreshadowed in visible buildings, so that rejoicing as the mother of countless children, she may be given her place in your heavenly glory. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Would those of you at home join with me now in this reflection on peace? Peace is only found in yes. Let us pray. O God, who chose to foreshadow for us the heavenly Jerusalem through the sign of your church on earth, grant, we pray, that by our partaking of this sacrament, we may be made the temple of your grace and may enter the dwelling place of your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. Please remember that all requests for prayers are included in our Prayer Intentions book and shared with all of our celebrants. She is the